Who is benefited by Jesus' priesthood in the heavenly sanctuary? Many are under the impression that people are benefited just by professing him as their Lord and Savior, or accepting that he is the Savior of the world. But is this the case? In this study, we're going to take a look at a book which has Jesus' priesthood as the central theme, the book of Hebrews. So let's start at the beginning. Hebrews 1, 1 through 2, and chapter 2, 1 through 4 reads, God, having in the past spoken to the fathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways, has at the end of these days spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also made the worlds. His Son is the radiance of his glory, the very image of his substance, and upholding all things by the word of his power, who, when he had by himself purified us of our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much better than the angels as the more excellent name he has inherited is better than theirs. Therefore, we ought to pay greater attention to the things that were heard, lest perhaps we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just penalty, how will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first, having been spoken through the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard, God also testifying with them, both by signs and wonders, by various works of power, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit, according to his own will. And again, that's Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 2, and chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The author of Hebrews here is saying that if a just penalty was incurred by drifting away from the word spoken through angels, if transgression and disobedience received a just penalty because the word spoken through angels were not given their proper attention, how will we escape punishment if we don't pay attention to the word spoken to us in these last days by God's Son? So we see here that basically Jesus' words in the last days are considered to be even more impactful than those spoken of by angels. Hence the question, if the people didn't escape punishment when disregarding the message from angels in the past, how will we escape punishment if we disregard the messages from Jesus in these last days? We see a similar thing spoken of in chapter 3, only instead of angels, we have Moses. It reads, quote, Therefore, holy brothers, partakers of a heavenly calling, Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him, as also Moses was in all his house. For he has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, because he who built the house has more honor than the house. Beware, brothers, lest perhaps there might be in any one of you an evil heart of unbelief and falling away from the living God. For who, when they heard, rebelled? Wasn't it all those who came out of Egypt led by Moses? With whom was he displeased forty years? Wasn't it with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? To whom did he swear that they wouldn't enter into his rest, but those who were disobedient? We see that they weren't able to enter in because of their unbelief. And that's Hebrews chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, verse 12, and verses 16 through 19. So the author of Hebrews is asking, Who was it who didn't enter into God's rest? Well, it was those who sinned those who were disobedient to God's word through Moses. And we see here that Hebrews is pointing out that Jesus is greater than Moses. Continuing with the next verse, which is the beginning of chapter 4, we read, quote, Let's fear, therefore, lest perhaps any one of you should seem to have come short of a promise of entering into his rest. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us, even as they also did. But the word they heard didn't profit them because it wasn't mixed with faith by those who heard. They to whom the good news was preached before failed to enter in because of disobedience. Let's therefore give diligence to enter into that rest, lest anyone fall after the same example of disobedience. Again, that's Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 2, 6, and 11. The people in Moses' day didn't enter into the rest of God because of disobedience, and we need to learn from their negative example, lest we not enter God's rest for the same reason. Again, we have an advantage over those in Moses' day, since we not only have their example, but we also have the ministry of Jesus himself. If we disobey, then, it's even less justifiable and even clearer why our disobedience would exclude us from entering into God's rest. Continuing with Hebrews chapter 4, verses 4 through 16, and Hebrews chapter 5, 9, we read, quote, Having then a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let's hold tightly to our confession, for we don't have a high priest who can't be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but one who has been in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. 
Let's therefore draw near with boldness to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and may find grace for help in time of need. Having been made perfect, he became to all of those who obey him the author of eternal salvation, named by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Again, that's Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, and chapter 5, verse 9. So Jesus, our high priest, helps those who obey him. His priesthood, his ministry, benefits those who obey. The priesthood of Jesus is not about people getting benefited by him just by professing to believe in him, just by accepting that he's the savior of the world. That isn't what causes people to receive the benefit of Jesus' ministry as our apostle and high priest. Now let's continue in Hebrews chapter 8, verses 9-10, through 10, which reads, quote, In the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, they didn't continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind. I will also write them on their heart. I will be their God, and they will be my people. And that selection is from Hebrews chapter 8, verses 9-10. through 10. Here we can see that after God took the Israelites by the hand out of Egypt, they disregarded his covenant, his law, and therefore he disregarded them. Now God is delivering us from sin in these last days and writing the law in our minds and hearts, which is a metaphor for the law governing our thoughts. With God's law internalized like this, the result will be obedience. Basically, God will have a people with Jesus as their high priest that are not disregarding God's law. Chapter 10 continues, quote, For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and a fierceness of fire which will devour the adversaries. A man who disregards Moses' law dies without compassion on the word of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think he will be judged worthy of who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant with which he has sanctified an unholy thing and has insulted the Spirit of grace? And that's Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 through 29. Again, if a man who disregarded Moses' words received punishment, how much worse will it be for us if we continue in sin with Jesus as our high priest? If we disobey the words of Jesus, we will not benefit from his priesthood. Having Jesus as our high priest requires more than acknowledging Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we're going to close with these encouraging words from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, which read, Therefore, let's also lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let's run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For studies on freedom from sin, please see What Jesus Taught About Doing Right and Wrong by Trent Wilde, among other studies, we'll have linked in the description. Thank you for staying with us till the end. We invite you to visit our website, www.bdsda.com, to learn more about who we are, and just as important, who we're not. Please join us each week as we'll continue to offer new and interesting insights for your Sabbath School studies. And if you want to keep up with our new studies as they're published, we recommend subscribing. We're on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and on plenty of other podcast apps. Links for subscribing are in the description. From Ed and myself, many blessings.